Well, good morning, friends and neighbors. This morning for me, anyway. I don't know what time you're joining me today, but uh, it's time for another devotion. And this time of year, spring, when uh, uh, creation seems to be uh, coming back to life, and uh, we're we're in Holy Week starting this Sunday with Palm Sunday. Uh, we talk about uh, dying to save the world. And so today's message is uh, living hope in a dead word, world. And our message is based on uh, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9, and that reads this way. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while. If necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through it, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Peter here speaks about an inheritance that's kept in heaven for us, and the way I think to understand that, he means the riches of heaven cannot be taken from us or snatched from us. Because God keeps us in the faith that he created and by which he saved us. And so our faith, according to Peter here, is revealed in true character when it's tested. And Peter, of course, is not only writing to us, he's speaking to early Christians who are suffering harsh, harsh persecution for following Jesus. Christians suffered under the Roman rule of Nehru, and they're dying today even still because of faith in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And so this idea of following Jesus, carrying our cross, suffering for him is just an age-old issue. And the important thing is, what is it that causes people to willingly suffer and bear up the injustice for the gospel? And I think Peter helps us here. So we can live under persecution and we can even die because God provides every need with a faith. And that faith establishes our identity as a child of God, knowing that our inheritance is in heaven and it's guarded by Jesus and it can't be taken from us. And that faith, of course, is a gift uh, according to the great mercy of God. And it's he, the creator, who makes us born again. And that faith is a gift because Jesus worked out our salvation in the pain and the suffering of the cross. And as we approach Holy Week this week, make sure that you consider we cannot imagine the pain of the cross because we have no idea what the pain is that Jesus suffered for bearing the wrath of God on the sins of the whole world, in addition to his physical pain. Um, and so that gift of faith comes to us because God loved us, and he's a holy God, and he required a sacrifice for all sins, and Jesus is our sacrifice, our peace offering, our substitute, as the Lamb of God. And so, faith 
is ultimately a gift that Jesus gives us. By grace we're saved through faith, meaning we can never, ever earn that. So think about our lives. Is there any investment that you can imagine that provides a heavenly guarantee? And the answer is an immediate no. Yet the fact of the matter is we tend to guard our earthly possessions and sometimes we hold on them way too tight. If you find joy in the things of this life uh, without the joy of heaven, uh, your life is certain to end in disappointment. A daughter of the church, many of you may know, Judy not. Judy will be, will have her Christian rite of burial and celebration of life today. Judy was a longtime member of Grace Lutheran Church and for the last several years the adult Sunday school teacher, at least one of them for our women's group. Judy lived the life of a servant leader. One day she noticed some pain and of course with COVID no one's going out and she thought maybe these were just some recurring ulcers. Well instead it turned out to be an aggressive cancer. The lesson, of course, here is not even the best of us can guard against the destructive nature of this world and the inevitable disease of sin, which ultimately ends in death. Judy dealt with many ups and downs like the rest of us, but death still came calling. And I spent some time with Judy here in the church, but also at her home, where what got Judy through was her faith, her conviction of confession and absolution, her trust in the body and blood of Christ that covered her sins in Holy Communion, and her baptism that connected her to the cross. Judy passed quickly. But in Christ Jesus, she left the dying world for the living hope of heaven in the presence of our Lord and all the saints who went before her. I talked to Judy when she was first grieved by her bad news, but I know now that she lives in praise and glory and honor. And Judy is celebrating this Easter as a victor. She won the battle because she died in Christ just as she lived in Christ. And of course, what that means is she did not die, but she simply walked home to her golden and eternal inheritance that's secured by the death and the resurrection of our Lord. Judy lived with her eyes on Jesus, and I'm sure she left this world with her eyes on Jesus. She knew that nothing can separate us from the love of God, and she now lives in a magnificent place of praise and honor and glory, waiting for the revelation of our Lord and the glory of God our resurrection when he comes again. God bless you. Be a blessing. I hope you are, have special plans to prepare for Holy Week and you're going to be with us here either in the sanctuary or uh, online on Facebook or YouTube for our uh, Palm Sunday services. I hope they'll also be a blessing to you. Till we meet again, Pastor Ed.